This is breaking news. Bill Maher's case for mediation in the national divorce. Even though I'm a religious person, I've always had a soft spot for a certain kind of cantankerous atheist. And although I'd never let myself be yoked with an unbeliever, I've always had a bit of an older man crush on Bill Maher. Maybe it's the way his eyes crease when he tells a particularly acidic joke. Or the fact that he understands the motivations of evangelicals much better than the average Democrat. Or maybe it's that he admits to wearing a smoking jacket, Henry Hitton's like, in the evenings after work. In the sad absence of Christopher Hitchens during our censorious era, Maher has fulfilled a craving for a suave, irascible heretic. Now 68 years old, Maher was raised Catholic in New Jersey and later found out that his mother's family was Jewish. He started his stand-up career in New York City before establishing a solid reputation as an edgier-thinking man's late-night host with the show's Politically Incorrect on Comedy Central and now Real Time on HBO, on whose throne he has presided for 21 years. His new book, What This Comedian Said Will Shock You, is a compendium of editorials from his current show, the concluding opinion pieces he presents to the audience at evening's end. It is organized by subject. You'll find herein assorted meditations on the media, cancel culture, guns, race, health, and even such abstract topics as time and fragility. One of the most constant accusations Maher's critics launch in his direction is that he's old. His protestations against recent social initiatives in America, they say, are nothing more than the fetching of a crabby, crumpled senior unable to digest the fact that the country has changed. But this is a mischaracterization of Maher's message. And anyway, there can be deep value in listening to our elders. It's something American youth doesn't do enough of. If you don't mind getting Sam between the pages of a hardcover, this book makes a great beach read. It's both fun and full of nuggets of wisdom. For instance, he demands to know of the Democrats how the party of FDR and JFK is turning into the party of LOL and WTF. He defends creative liberty, warning that art and coercion is a bad combination. He laments the powerlessness of the individual in an unhealthy society. You can put a healing crystal up your ass, but there's no escaping the environment we all live in. He attacks the fat positivity movement. You're not a freedom fighter because you want to keep eating donuts. Alongside that, there is surprisingly deep advice. The answer isn't to insist that everyone in society love you exactly the way you are, it's to learn to tell the ones who don't that you don't need them. And he is absolutely correct when he diagnoses millennials as emotionally squeamish, a notion any woman can verify by viewing the thousand picture of a dating app douchebag saying he's looking for good vibes only. Even though for many years he's been a notorious, strident atheist, Maher espouses several values in his book, that could be characterized as Christian and even deeply Catholic. Who knew a libertine could provide such moral guidance? There is a marked anti-utopian strain in his thinking. One of the points he makes over and over is that humans are not naturally virtuous and society is not infinitely perfectible. He despises the oversanitization of our era, preferring the world as it is, messy and impure. He is profoundly pluralist, insisting that this new idea that each culture must remain in its own separate silo is not better, and it's not progress. Maher, in short, believes in equality and improving life conditions for our fellow citizens, but he could never be called a reformist. In a 2019 monologue, he demonstrated an uncanny understanding of religious conservatives, pinpointing a frequent reason for Republican electoral success. They're not babies who think they can have everything. Evangelicals don't really like Donald Trump. They know he can't even pass a church without bursting into flames. But he got them two justices on the Supreme Court. On economics, he's surprisingly based, as the children say, declaring that the real issue in America today is class, not race. He has no problem alerting insults, whom he hilariously terms digital enics, that it might be time to take down their Ayn Rand posters. Somewhere along the way, libertarianism morphed into this creepy obsession with a selfish, crick version of free market capitalism. I'll admit that I first started watching Real Time several years ago because I enjoyed the delicious dunking on progressive overreach. Mayer presents himself as a moderate who helps normal people laugh at all those on both the left and right who seem to have lost their minds. At heart, he's an enlightenment stan. He believes in reason and common sense. Fair enough.